So let's start with our today's topic. So our today's topic is uh, use cases with Splunk, FortiGate use cases with Splunk or any other SIM tool. We can say it's not FortiSIM, instead it's okay or any SIM tool. How, first of all, how this topic uh, came uh, into my mind to present. Actually, uh, we had a Splunk implementation at our organization and we got a request from the SIM team, team like they want to know what all dif different things or purpose or the events based on that they can create some uh, use cases for 40 SIM, use cases for uh, SIM tool. So th th that was a lit little uh, uh, difficult question because uh, it's up to the Splunk or any SIM tool like what uh, use cases they can think of or based on the management what use cases can we think of or, or or you need to understand like what is the purpose or what you want to achieve so if you have a clear picture in your mind like what you want to achieve then it's easier to understand the use cases rather than simply asking anyone like okay tell me the use cases for uh, FortiGate with Splunk so it's not something like uh, everyone can tell but it's purely based on the requirement that you want to achieve or uh, the scenarios which you are facing or uh, let's say you want to generate a specific reports for your management or you want to see the traffic analysis or <clears throat> based on uh, uh, different parameters. So it's not uh, a standard practice or it's not only like uh, available, these are the available options or these are the available use cases. So it purely depends on everyone's requirement. Based on that, I decided to create a video because uh, after that I did a research <coughs> and I figured out like uh, what could be the various use cases uh, when you integrate a SIM tool with a FortiGate firewall. Let's start. <coughs> So I am going to talk about the possible use cases related to FortiGate in order to define it in a SIM solution. These are just some of the options based on my understanding, but that can differ based on organization requirement, based on individual requirement or based on the scenarios you are facing in your current uh, environment or organization. So I tried to collect some of the events or issues that happen and where the SIM tool can help us to understand these requirements. Uh, these are some of the events which can be use cases for a SIM tool. So from generally uh, any hardware device or with respect to FortiGate, FortiGate sends some events or logs to the SIM by using a syslog event. So from those events, some of the useful events could be the CPU usage statistics. And then we have device shutdown, disk full, fan anomaly, interface status change, log disk full, temperature too high or too low, or conserve mode entered. So these are some of the events or use cases which you can consider it from a hardware related uh, use case. How this is going to be a use case or how this can help us? Let's say uh, if you create an alarm or an event in your SIM tool, like if the CPU usage statistics is more than 80% or more than 85%, then you can trigger, a, trigger an event to the concerned teams or raise an alarm for the SOC to acknowledge <coughs> where they can uh, forward these events to the network team or to the security team based on the organization. So that will help us uh, to prevent uh, high CPU because uh, uh, you will be able to generate an event and trigger an event where the SOC team or the network team can follow up on this with the uh, concerned individual who is managing the firewalls. So that's how CPU uses statics. Device shutdown. Uh, device shutdown is a uh, little general because most of the time in any organization we already have uh, device monitoring tools or uptime monitoring tools which can also report the device shutdown or device unreachable. But generally these tools report uh, the device unreachable status based on some ping parameter means ICMP request or based on a SNMP polling. In the SIM, Whenever there is a 
device shut down manual or because of any issues a device shut down event is generated in the fortigate firewalls and based on that event you can trigger a uh, uh, same same use case where you can inform the respected team that your device is being shut down similarly we have got disk full disk full is let's say uh, you 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 are enabling local disk logging on your fortigate firewall or you are doing uh, any kind of uh, heavy logging or all the rules are being logged so th th that can cause a disk full on the fortigate so you can create an use case for disk full as well then we have something fan anomaly so the uh, fan anomaly this is related to the hardware again where you will come to know that the fan has been failed or fan is failed on the fortigate firewall interface status change is similar like whenever an interface goes down or it changes its states from up to down or down to up a interface status changes event is triggered so log disk full is purely based based on the log disk means logging because from the entire disk you can allocate a certain amount of space or percentage to the logging capacity so if only the logging is full then a log disk full will be triggered otherwise whenever the entire disk is getting full then disk full event can be triggered similarly we can have temperature too high event or temperature too low event and conserve mode enter conserve mode is basically when the memory utilization on a 48 firewall is greater than 80 percent so that's called conserve mode whenever there is high memory utilization the device go to conserve mode conserve mode is an important event because if the device goes more than 90 uh, percent of the utilization then the fortigate may stop processing the traffic and that might cause that might cause some outage to the environment so you should also have an event triggered or a use case for conserve mode entered these these were the some of the use cases related to the hardware then let's go to some other events so similarly we have got failover events so you can have use cases based on the reset uptime whether there is an issue or why the firewall uptime has been reset to zero so HA reset uptime is basically like the it's manually the uptime of the device has been reset to zero or the device just uh, rebooted and came up and because of that event the uptime of the firewall was reset we can have heartbeat packet lost so this is this occurs whenever there is a uh, heartbeat packets are not received or not seen by one firewall or the other firewall so in uh, what happens in heartbeat packet lost is both the device will try to become active or a master master scenario can occur because of uh, failure of the heartbeat interface or any other issues between the heartbeat interfaces so this th this event can also be noticed you know, to create an event or use case <coughs> then we can also have heartbeat device interface down so heartbeat device interface is the interface which is connecting both the members of the cluster so that interface specifically is called heartbeat device interface so the, the, these events can be based on the failover events then some, some of the events can be based on the admin logins because admin logins are also uh, like if any kind of attack is going on and uh, so, so so we should also take into the consideration of the admin logins so let's say an event caused admin login disabled that means either someone is trying wrong password or someone is misusing the admin privileges or who, who might be trying to uh, get an uh, access to the device but because of multiple failures or uh, multiple wrong passwords that account might have been disabled so this this raises a security concern and this kind of event should also be taken care uh, from a sim if you can generate an event or a report from the sim tool that will help to uh, get an idea of why like the admin login is getting disabled and what is the frequency similarly if any admin is trying to do a modification on the cluster uh, maybe because he is changing the field device from primary to master or master to primary uh, vice versa so this kind of event can also help you to generate an um, use case or a, a report or event which can cause uh, 
which can have an event in your sim tool then uh, then let's go to some software issues software issues so even for software issues fortigate uh, generates an event log in case of a kernel error or application crash so uh, you you might have seen in our pr previous uh, videos where i was uh, I, I was trying to tell you about diag debug application crash log read so this is basically an command which shows uh, any historical crash logs or whenever an application is getting crashed so in case of in case of any application crashes uh, an event log will be generated and this this event can be uh, utilized by the sim tool to catch any irrelevant any <coughs> issues on the firewall uh, due to the application crash so this can be one of the use case uh, so sim sim can help by catching the crash event cra catching the crash event and in and informing individual or the team so similarly this is kernel crest or kernel error kernel error uh, because of uh, many software issues on the firewall uh, because of os or software issues because of os or software issues so for this event can be used as a use case <coughs> similarly the, the the above use cases which i told were purely based on the event logs or the event id but after that uh, you can have some use cases based on the logs which are continuously flowing fortigate sends all the data or all the logs for each individual firewall policy or any system event to the syslog server so based on those uh, logs traffic logs uh, web filtering logs system event logs you you can have a number of use cases some of the use cases can be let's say number of vpn users logged in uh, your management requires i want to know how many vpn users are logged in today so simply from the splunk or from the any sim tool you can generate a report based on the logs so how how you are going to do that let's say whenever a user uh, logs into the vpn on the fortigate a event log is generated that event log is uh, let's say user xyz logged in successfully <clears throat> so you can count the number of events specifying the log description and you can create a report on the sim tool so you can have uh, some reports or based on log analysis and event count you can generate uh reports can be generated so those reports can be related to number of vpn users logs number of failed VP, number of failed vpn logins or can be <coughs> or can be admin logins can be admin logins onto the firewall <coughs> then can be session a number of concurrent session number of sessions throughout the day there are n number of cases which you can utilize based on the logs you just need to uh, get into what requirement you are looking for or what is the purpose so based on the logs you can create a report or the create a bar pie chart etc so the, the, these are some of the examples number of the sessions throughout the day then you can have <coughs> uh web filtering blocks let's say for web filter you can say websites blocked you can have a report for websites blocked uh report for websites blocked or report for websites allowed <coughs> this will be based on web filtering blocks so th th these are different kind of uh, reports that can be generated if you utilize the uh logs on the sim tool that will apart from all this uh, which i told we have got specifically an application fortinet app for splunk so if you go to splunk and you will search for a app uh, then you can get a fortinet app 
And using that app, there are already predefined dashboards or predefined reports or pattern that can be used. So the, 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 these are some of the predefined dashboards that are given into the Splunk. So you can see malware center, traffic center, IPS, web center, network changes. <coughs> So if you are using the Fortinet app for Splunk, then you can uh, use these already predefined dashboards, which will help you to generate some more use cases. <coughs> uh, okay, and uh, now I'm going to tell you how I got all this information or what triggered this. See, first thing is, uh, the, the, these use cases are purely based on what is an individual requirement. But to help you or to understand what can be done, uh, I used the um, uh, security automation feature basically. So in Fortinet, uh, Fortigate 6.0 onwards, Fortigate has got uh, something called security automation. So from there I got an idea like what all things I can trigger. So if you, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, if you, if you, if you go to the dashboard uh, or the the GUI of the firewall and you go and go into the security fabric and automation. <clears throat> if you try to create a automation stitch, you will see a trigger. That trigger is called 40 OS event log. So from this event log, you get all these possible logs based on which a automation stitch or automation trigger can be configured. This uh, automation stitch is basically a 40 OS feature which can generate an event or a um, send an email or can execute a script based on these events. But similarly, instead of security automation, if you are looking for use cases from a 40 sim perspective, then th th this, this is going to give you an idea like what all different purpose or different use cases you might create based on these events. <coughs> So, so this actually gave me an idea uh, to get uh, more use cases of uh, using a SIM tool or generating an event from the SIM tool. So, <coughs> so as I told, like similarly, an alarm or event notification <coughs> or email can be triggered from Splunk or any other SIM tool. So hope uh, this uh, video or uh, this presentation is going to help you in uh, deciding uh, the various use cases for the Splunk. And this video was purely based on a customer um, customer requirement or based on uh, my management requirement. Here I try to understand like what are the different things uh, I can uh, create or what are the different uh, use cases where I can use the uh, Splunk with Fortigate and what are the different kind of requirement which I might achieve using the Splunk. So hope this will help you uh, to create use cases in your environment and let me know if this video helped you. Uh, thank you so much guys. Thank you for watching the video and if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.